Welcome to The Conquering Truth. I'm Dan Horn. I'm Dashi Zingak Nengak. I'm Charles Churchill. And I'm Joshua Horn. In last week's episode, we talked about the blessings that we have in America that are easy to overlook, but are easily seen by a Nigerian that comes over here. In this week's episode, we're going to talk about, from a Nigerian's perspective, what, what things America is missing and what we're lacking compared to, to a third world country. And it's important for us to understand these things as well. Please enjoy the episode. It just seems like that's a good time to pivot to some of the ways that uh, Nige- that, that America should change to be like Nigeria, because there are that is a that is a separate list, and there are things that that Nigeria has or has preserved that that America's lost, and you know maybe one of those is uh, what you're just mentioning, homosexuality. So is yeah. that. What what's the status of that in Nigeria? Well, um, I think uh, majorly what they call the um, celebrities and all of that are trying to push by using the social media to try to advocate for that, but it will take them time to, <laughs> to, to succeed because the traditional culture of Nigeria forbids that, Islam forbids that. Christianity forbids that. And the law forbids it. And the law itself. Can you say Christianity that. forbids that again? Yes, <laughs> Christianity definitely <laughs> forbids that. Thank you. I was just that that, 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 that should, should even be the, I, the I, uppermost, I, even more than You Islam. can say that again if you want to, too. <laughs> <laughs> because, of course, I, I can't just imagine any Christian ever professing that. It's so so forbidden for you to even talk about it because it's the Bible so is so... So is against <laughs> nature is what the you Bible know, says. Even <laughs> completely. So all of it, there's no denomination in Nigeria that will, I don't know, maybe in some years they will start some denominations that will do that, but at the moment, all on that kind. And there are countries in Africa, I think Malawi accepts it and stuff, but they do it because most of their funding comes from Europe. And exactly. Europe basically said, we'll shut you down. Most of Nigeria's funding comes from oil. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's an OPEC nation. Exactly. And so they don't have the same leverage. Yeah. But the European countries, the America, I mean, this is an agenda that's being pushed on the weak countries in Africa. And there's a lot of weakness to Nigeria in a lot of ways, but financial resources, you can fund a government because of because of oil. Yeah. And I have learned that there's actually pressure pushing, especially where the Nigerian government used to borrow money from the West. I don't know America or any other place, but there's pressure on them to accept it. So at one point, they, they thought of bringing it up, but even from the legislature, Native, um, you can't mention it. You just can't because there they will not allow it. Otherwise, you know, they can be corruptible, get the money, go back to their villages, to their constituency, and be big men and women with the stolen money, and then people will worship and serve them. But if they dare go there, that's where people will resent them and hate them because it's so inhuman to think about a man as a woman and a woman as a man. And I mean, it it seems to me like Buhari, too. I mean, he was a jihadist at one point, the president of Nigeria, for those who don't know. And so it's really hard for me to imagine a jihadist embracing that position. I mean, that just... Exactly. In fact, at one point, they said, you know, Obama then because he leveraged on America. Usually, well, we'll talk about that. That's where Americans' um, election is very important to us because we see how Americans' government influences the elections in, in, in Nigeria. Now, at one point, we learned Buhari have accepted to have the homosexuality thing, which is really? why he, yes, which is why he beat Jonathan because Jonathan outrightly refused it. It wasn't, so the CNN and all of that start campaigning against Jonathan because of that. But Buhari, in principle, accepted for him to have the power because he knows very well he can't advocate right. it in Nigeria. And he himself is against it because he's a fundamentalist to a large extent. So he can't, you know, do that. But he has to accept that just to be in the power. And when he's in the power, he won't do it. Right. Respect to award. 
So um, maybe in years to come, but for now, I, I don't see it. There's a big cultural change that would have to happen for Yeah, for that to happen. And uh, another one that's very obvious to us it would be abortion. That abortion is, I believe, illegal in Nigeria. It's illegal. Not that it doesn't mean that it, that it doesn't happen. <laughs> Actually. But it is still yeah. illegal. But and by it's law is better illegal. to be illegal than yeah. it is to be legal, basically. It's, it's just that, you know, with the proliferation of uh, promiscuity all over and with the way the church is failing, um, abortion is becoming so much and so rampant among the youths and all of that due to, you know, fornication and adultery all happening. But as a law, it still remains. Most of the abortions happen not in an agree, agreed married life or even a partnership life. It's more like being in in the fornication whatever and then they call it accident so they don't want people to know she doesn't the girl doesn't want people to know she's pregnant and want to abort it and the guy doesn't want to take responsibility and he insists she abort it but not that they will have an agreed together like you know and then because in america it's not unusual for married couples to abort their babies wow That's i mean terrible. i think you know the abortion clinic that we that we protest at and preach the gospel at to try to, to rescue babies. I think it's about 50% there are married, something like that. Wow. That's and serious. so they're, they're murdering their own children, even though, you know, <laughs> the number of children born to married couples is only like 50%. So abortion, I believe the statistic work that it married, unmarried abortions about the same rate. And even in Nigeria, I think the whole thing is going is flipping over because now girls are even more confident to give birth to their children and call themselves baby mama. I don't know if you heard that word. They call baby mama to 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 the guys. So they will have the babies and said they are baby mamas because they are trying to learn from America being single mothers. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful <laughs> things that we export. <laughs> so now. And that's a curse because yes, it is. God will judge us for but the things that we're We exporting. have, like, I was talking in the church, in just the little community we are, there are lots of girls with children. They are teenage girls with children that are not aborted. And they are afraid of doing it. They do it where. It's either the pressure is too much on them or there's a doctor that wants to make money out of them or something. Otherwise, they're afraid to go for it. And I mean, just in general, in Nigeria, it seems, I mean, looking at the birth rate, that the children are considered to be much greater of a blessing than yes. they are. I mean, the birth rate in Nigeria is declining, but it's, yeah. I mean, we're down to, for native-born Americans, we're like 1.4, 1.5. I mean, we're very low we're in terms of the replacement rate. rate. I mean, right. we will die off as a culture if we didn't have the level of immigration that we have. But Nigeria is not like that. You're kind of the other way where, you know, I think when I started to go eight years ago, there was 180 million people. Now the estimate is 220 million. Yes. That's a huge increase in population over a pretty short period of time. In fact, in Nigerian culture, it's a great blessing to have a child. Irrespective of how the child comes, the child overrule everything. Usually when, okay, a lady can be disgraced for being pregnant and she can be ridiculed and all of that, but the day she gives birth, everybody will celebrate that child. And it's almost like, even though they will say she has a baby, she has a baby, but they are looking at the baby as a great blessing. That's that we have. And somehow it helps to, to keep the babies. You know? Right, um, right. Now, if the attitude in a society is to say, as God says, that children are a gift from God, yeah. then that will change whether you abort this gift because yeah. you see it as a gift. And as you, yeah. if you see it as a precious gift, then mm -hmm. then you're going to consider, and Islam considers it to be a gift as well. I mean, Definitely. they consider children to be Definitely. a blessing. And so with the two predominant teachings there, that's that's in, what in you fact, would expect to see. Yes. The, 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 the Muslims even um, protect the children much more than our society because in theirs, if there's pregnancy, they will force her to get married before right. it comes out. 
So they do the marriage thing to cover the pregnancy because they do teenage, you know, marriage more than us, you know. And us, the men are less committed to take steps when they are not ready because they want to be financially a little bit buoyant to get married. But in Islam, you can, you know, even when you cannot provide for yourself, it is believed even around communally they will help you to take care of your wife and your children. So you. But even biblically, there's no question that they should get married. So it's not. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's so pretty sad that the Muslims exactly. hold closer to scripture than the well. the so-called Christians. Exactly, exactly. In fact, you know, based on the awareness we are having with the teaching of the scriptures that you've been doing, I see that the Muslims are copying what is scriptural and it's a blessing to them because you will see them marrying young even when there's nothing believing that the God that gave them the wife or bid them to marry or give them the children will, will bless them will bless them <laughs> and they have been blessed they are really been blessed because um, I got married at uh, 30 31 almost 31 years um, and then I have my uh, my classmate, whom we're the same age, married at 20. At the time I was getting married, his child was already 10 years, and he has more than seven children already, you know, because almost every year he's given birth to a child. Then tell me how I can beat him <laughs> when we come to election. He has a candidate, he will win. Because in 18 years or 10 more years, all those children are eligible to, to vote. And my own one child is just a child and myself, you know. So, um, you know, they, 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 they are gaining more ground because of this, you know. They are m getting more populated because of this. And they take over the business atmosphere because you already have responsibility. What do you do? You move into the market and find something to eat. They live by what they get daily and progressively move with it. And we want to gather much before we even marry one. Right. And we stuck and stay there without progressively moving. We don't even create ideas because we want to be comfortable before we you know, get committed to to, to raising children and all of that. So this had put us, you know, I mean, it is interesting. I mean, even in America, there's there's a distinct different level of prosperity in everything. Yeah. Once you get married, you become more productive. Yes. And wow. the reality is, I think, you know, responsibility exactly. yeah. you know, <laughs> creates productivity, exactly. creates response exactly. to that. Exactly. And, yeah, when you have a culture that's putting off marriage till 30 or 31, as yeah. America keeps shifting later, too, yeah. I mean, it, it's very impoverishing. In fact, we, we, we can say we marry early at 30, 31. Now most of them marry 35, 36, the men, you know, most right now because they hardly marry at, at that age. They see it early because before you get to a point where you can have to do that and couple with lots of things. But generally, it's a great blessing to see children as, as a blessing. Right. And a lot of times, except those that completely are bad, it's not even being a Christian. They believe that by doing abortion, you destroy your womb. And at the end of the day, when you are ready to get married or something, it will be difficult for you to give back to a child. And in Nigeria, when you are married without a child, it's more difficult. It's more like... The father's say, family is going yes, to be saying, what kind of woman are you, basically? Everybody will insult you, including your own family. They will be looking forward to that child. They will make comments, they will say things that will make your marriage miserable because there's no child. So children are seen as a very great blessing to marriages. So they better keep the children. We, we, we brought you on to tell us curses that you see in American society that yeah. we're blind to, and then we've been listing, <laughs> listing ones. Do you have any that you can think of that? Yeah, um, what I call it, transgender thing. Mm-hmm where I, I, learned, I read somewhere that said 
in some places where they give birth to children, they will have to reach certain age to decide if they are male or female. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I told you we're going insane. In, in, in Nigeria, I don't know if it will even ever happen because the difference between a man and a woman is very clear. Even though they've infiltrated us with the work aspect where women also take jobs I, and do all of that, and you were cautioning. And I will know. tell you, Zingak, I think you're wrong that unless the church repents yeah. for saying that men and women are the same, yeah. if the church can't figure out men and women are the same, give it two generations and society won't be able to figure it out. Wow. Transgenderism will come to Nigeria wow. unless the church can say, a man's a man, a woman's a woman, because wow. if the church brings that darkness instead of light, wow. you will get there. And even though I can understand you're looking at your society going, no, nah, it won't happen, <laughs> yeah. I think you're wrong. Well, it I will happen because, because really you're right. only a generation. I, was, I would have said it would have been impossible in the exactly, United States. Yeah. That it, right. That's correct. Unless the U.S. implodes and this serves as a warning for everyone else. <laughs> Which God may yeah. bless the world by doing that. Yeah. So any other areas of cursing that you see in America that we might be blind to? Yeah. We yes. don't dance. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least <laughs> we don't dance. <laughs> Baptists don't dance. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the, the dancing aspect is not more of what, um, more of what I see as, as somehow a curse before the dancing issue is this aspect of um, having everybody here and they become citizens and then, for example, the Muslims can come and have more children and then you have, you know, well, I don't know if it's true because it's when I met you that I discovered that, well, you can have more than three children or more than one child and all of that. But we have a perceived um, impression that Americans don't give back to more than three children and the Muslims will come and have much more than that and then this concept of freedom that allows everybody comes here and make here a home will one day be endangering that's what I am thinking because um, right and I think happening? that yeah, I mean, yeah. one of the things that's happening because there is the Muslims that, yeah. that have large families and the other group that has large families tend to be the, the Catholics, which is mostly Hispanic. Yeah. And so a lot of the Hispanic immigrants are Catholic and so they have large families as well. Okay. And so those are the two cultures that are rising up and growing rapidly in America is the Muslim culture and the, in the, yeah. in the Catholic Hispanic and, and culture. Really what you're talking about is not not trying to preserve a culture, but letting your culture be changed. Exactly. I mean, that's because I mean, we've talked that's about exactly immigration, well. that with immigration, you shouldn't fear immigration. But what, mm -hmm. it's not wrong to say this is a culture we're trying to preserve. And right. it's particularly, particularly we're a Christian, which to say right. we're a Christian nation and we're going to preserve that. And so right. You yeah. can come in and be Muslim and, yes. but ha and have a bunch of children, but it doesn't mean that you can change us from being a Christian is, nation. That is the but, point. We don't, we don't have that. Exactly. that. Yeah. And it's interesting that one of the checks that you have to stop that is you do have a bunch of different languages in Nigeria. Yeah. A lot of villages have their own yeah. language, which yeah. creates a subculture and a national culture because you have that, just like we were talking about in America, you have multiple levels of government. Yes. In in Nigeria, you have multiple levels of culture almost because you go, hey, you're of the same tribe as I am. And yeah. there's a, a unity at a cultural level that's at a village level or as a yeah. the language level. Yeah. And then it goes up and then there's Hausa, which is a broader group. And mm -hmm. so you have this multiple levels of preserving culture. While yeah. in mm -hmm. the U.S., we don't you know, Compared. you go here and you go to, to Washington State and mm -hmm. the culture's not that much different. It's a little bit different. But if you yeah. go into an inner city in North Carolina, an inner city in California, mm -hmm. the attitudes are the same. If you go to rural, the attitudes are the same. So are there any things in the church that you see that the Nigerian church has uh, that they do better than the American church? Yeah, you know. One aspect is the fact that the Nigerian, I mean, the American church varies, right? Sure. Uh, especially the, this 
church here is very different in many right. ways. <laughs> but in in Nigeria, there are certain issues you don't joke about, especially like being a member of the church, like um, baptism. You, you, when you are baptized, you are baptized into a particular church. It's difficult for you to, you know, sometimes... Before now, if you are baptized in Equa and you move to Cochin, you will be seen as a prostitute. You know, how will you be baptized here and then go there? You know, it's seen that way. It's right. assumed, you know. But You're dating the church, essentially. Exactly. So, but recently, people are allowed to move, you know, easily. But And just, just if I can add something, yeah. just for our listeners, that if you look at da- – Doctrinally, Equa and Koken are very similar doctrinally. Exactly. It's not like you're saying, exactly. you know, Equa and Roman Catholic or Equa and, you know, no, no, no. I mean, these are these are we're two denominations close. that were planted to be reformed exactly. denominations. That's correct. They are very close, and yet you you, you, you don't do that. Uh, last Sunday, was it last Sunday or the Sunday before last? We, okay, we are to have the communion, and you know, the Communion is meant for communi- uh, communicant members only. It's only when you are baptized that you take communion. So uh, my children, I mean those from my house, there are about six of them that are communicant members, and only one of them stay for the communion. All the others didn't take the communion. So it's as serious as if you know you have something fishy in your life, you don't take it at all and in the church the equa church uh, the bigger church where i was a member you you they have very big problem with coming to church activities but on the day of communion because we take communion once a month okay the church will be full because as a communicant member if you lose coming to take that communion it's a big problem but you have and, like cards and there's a card, <laughs> yes. There's a card that the the elders of the church or the priest is supposed to sign that you have taken the communion. So they will look at which months you've missed the communion and then look at why do you miss those communion. You know. So it is taken very very serious as against the one in America. You just believe anywhere. You just take your communion and move. But they in Nigeria is a very serious thing. Even if they are living in sin, but membership to a church is a very serious thing. Dedication of a child in a church is a very serious thing. You, and then burials, the worst of all is burials. You have to be a registered church member for the church to bury you. You know, hmm. you can just move around and then expect somebody to come and bury you. And in some places, if you are that person that visits here and visits there, you may have two churches coming to stand on your body, insisting this one will say it's our member, this one will say it's our member, then there will be clash for who to bury you. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a serious Maybe, maybe we won't try to adopt that. <laughs> <laughs> there's, probably, there's other things we can learn. Like. <laughs> we don't need fights in the graveyard. Yeah. Right. So membership to a church is a very, very serious thing, even though we might not be living the biblical principle. That's why the Christian name is very important to to the to the Christian. You know, um, there was a time when when Christians have been slaughtered so much, and then they want to do a retaliation in a way to protect their territory. And one of the basics for for you to be identified as a Christian is to actually do the Lord's prayer. And to a large extent, if they know that the others knows the, 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 the Lord's Prayer, then they go to, you know, every membership card has um, what they call uh, something members ought. So you must have to know how to recite that. So they will ask you to recite that to know if... So do you have it, like, memorized for Equa? Yes. I mean, okay. yes. So like has it. It. No, but I meant, do you, like, personally, as an Equa member, do you, like, know it? I don't know it. Actually, I, I don't. Right. I, I was don't just curious if it, it was something that everybody I, I, I would need to know. I used to know it in Hausa, actually, because I came from the Hausa church. Right. Yeah, but the English one, I didn't take time to memorize Right, no, it but I was that. just curious yeah. as to... But but there are lots of Equa members that can memorize that easily for you. Right. Because, 
sometimes in communion they will ask them to we'll just have to read that pledge and all of that you right know, it's more like a pledge to be you right know, you're i mean even at communion when you're taking communion that you're kind of saying you exactly. know this is what i'm doing yes. living for god and exactly. those kind of things exactly. so yeah exactly. i mean church membership used to be a much at least i don't i can say when we were modifying our constitution, I read a whole bunch of old constitutions, and the most common thing that existed in Baptist constitutions that I could find was, you know, that you had to be a member. If you left that church, you were still a member of that church until, you know, and that you had an obligation to find another church and that you had to join. And so it never matched the model that you have there, but it was taken much more seriously, at least mm. from the point of view of like a covenant and having a covenantal relationship, wow. which, which is kind of interesting. That's great. And, and, and like if you are moving, you have to take what they call transfer as a member. It will be written, it will be given to you, you have to give it to the other priests for them to accept you as a member in, in, in that church for you to take communion. Otherwise, nobody will receive you there as, as members. So that's how it's taken serious even though we are losing grip to some of those because of the Pentecostal you know because the Pentecostal churches came with breaking all of those boundaries and then you just come in and they also are having problem with that because there's uh, lots of movements and you know when you preached about the the goats and the sheep and the goat hunters and the good shepherd it mm -hmm. clarifies that for me because when the Pentecostals came they picked members from all these mainline churches definitely so they break all those membership thing but then it became a problem for them because, <laughs> because today they will, here, tomorrow they will move there they keep moving <laughs> all around them so they too started bringing in things that will hold members back you understand what i'm trying to say <laughs> so so that they can yeah. have that so it is also back to that where yeah. you have to hold people to membership of a church, you know, to the, to a large extent that you can travel, you can do anything without letting your pastor know. Sometimes he has to give you permission for you to go. <laughs> Otherwise, it looks like your your travel. Well, you must be talking fertility. to your you're talking to your pastor a lot to get permission to travel. Then <laughs> since you travel but a lot, I I, I, I am. A, well, they know They've me. They've given up on you. They, they, have, they have just, you know. Uh, it's like, yeah, he's gone again. <laughs> when they see me, they see me because I, I I do travel a lot and they understand that I'm doing a lot of things. So, right. But usually you have to do that. And then, like the Pentecostals, the way they do to hold the church members is the pastor will now have to prophesy, you know, prophecy to them is uh, foretelling. Then he says some of those good, good things that will happen to you and then release you to move. So people want that kind of prayer, you know. Right. So when things are good, they won't see that God did it. They will see that the it's man. the man of God that helped to talk to God for on their behalf. So that tied them to the church, right. the kind of. Hmm. Yeah. That's so interesting. interesting. Other things you see in church life there that are? The system that we are using, which is also going into the mainland churches, is borrowed from American church too. Right. Not your setting of the church, but right. the normal, um, I'm sorry to say, the frivolous kind of you know, worship system. That's what came up. And then Nigerians also copied it. And then you have many of those that grow up in the church are the terrible, terrible secular singers because they start as gospel artists. They made the name within the gospel setting, but then they will not be making much money as those in the secular, so they move to secular because they even have better gifts in the... Yeah, that's never world. happened in the United States. <laughs> so yeah, never happened. Yeah, happened. Yeah. That is yeah. exactly the pattern that happens here. Exactly. So that's, that's what they are. All it's of an them, easy... The, you know, the Christians, they go, oh, these words are wonderful, so they require a lower level of skill to enter. Exactly. Or and these words they build a fine, <laughs> Right. Yeah. But I mean, but even the skill of the singers has to be less than to make it in the secular because there's more competition. So they'll start out in the, in the sacred, in the gospel, yeah. you know, rapping and things like that yes. frequently until they build up a following and then they can transfer that following with them to the secular 
That's realm. Great. So somebody who could never have made it as a secular artist all of a sudden is, look out how great he is because exactly. he already had a following that he built because right. it required a lower standard of talent. That's correct. So that's, that's, that's an aspect that we, we are lacking or we have gone off because, you know, it is the same Pentecostal system that goes into our mainline churches. When we were coming up in the mainline churches, we don't have all this kind of uh, band doing all of that. We don't. We have the choir. It's right. a group of choir. And usually it is screened, properly screened. For you to be a member of a choir, you, you know, you go through a lot, and your life will always be, be watched over. But today, within them, you know, lots of things is happening, and then we have this so-called band thing, and that one put them much worse. And oh, you yeah. have a church, you have to start looking forward to get instruments and all of mm. that, the band and all of that for them. In fact, some people, some pastors even believe without those bands and all of that church is not yet set. So the small church we're starting and then the pastor is thinking about, you know, those instruments. I told him, that's not church. If you want us to build up a, a party hall, then we should start with that. that build these people in the word of God. We right. want to be different. I mean, we are not much, we are not rich, but we want to be rich in the word of God. If you will concentrate that, that will be better for us. And he must not be competing with other pastors because there's also competition between them right. to see which kind of instruments they have in their churches just to poof up the youths, nothing more. But it, aren't you like the... The church that's meeting in your house, isn't it technically like a prayer group or something? I forget. Yes, they call and, it a prayer group. At some point in time, you become a church when you get exactly. a certain thing. And so so somebody that's in pastoring in that setting, they're trying to become a church. And, well, the way that works is to get instruments and to build out your band and exactly. to do these other things. So it's also the way the, the whole system works to drive people towards that because – Numbers are everything. Exactly. Not holiness, numbers, which numbers happens in American yeah, church. So I think that's one of the things that's exactly the same as the American church. A lot of these things we've exported. Exactly. Right. The growth we are talking about is when we are growing individually towards God. And when we are becoming more like Christ, that is growth. It's not about the number. And he must not walk to get numbers. He should walk towards building these people to be more like Christ, our lives will bring in people, people who right. want to also be like Christ, not a bunch of anything. And we don't need those instruments for now. Let's, we need to build the people. Right. Not, not, and because of that, you know, they have gone to start baptizing children to be communicant members because you have to count the number of, okay, for you to become a church, just like you know, right. it has to be 30 communicant members. So, even uh, when you have 10, 12 children, 13-year-old <laughs> children are being baptized just to be able to make up the number. And I said they should stop that. Right. All these are kids who knows nothing between their left and right, and then you are making them take Holy mm -hmm. Communion just because you want to make up a number Into, and form a church yeah. within it's, a short period. It's a time. very dangerous thing to tell yeah. a child that they've been saved and you baptize them you know. when they don't know God because yeah. you've now made it harder for anybody to ever witness to them and say you need to repent because they go, I'm already a Christian. Right. It's the worst it's thing that you can do. It's one of the greatest sins that you can do against a child. That's correct. But also we have an aspect that we... Like I, I always said, we, we rejoice before the Lord. We dance in the church. We, what? we celebrate God. You know, we celebrate his... We celebrate him. We're just more low-key. <laughs> <laughs> we should mm -hmm. express our, our gratitude to God by physically, you know... Worshiping no, God. I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, I've, I've asked you that question before. I'm, I, I'm having understanding of what you were I'm not saying that we're not too yeah. stiff and that it wouldn't be good uh, for us to lose some I mean, He's got some of the, like, the Bible on his side in a sense. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> details, details. No, <laughs> <laughs> that helps. <laughs> yeah, so, but... 
Um, and I'm also appreciating the, the solemn worship that we had. Maybe I'm growing, but <laughs> I used to. Maybe used you're just to, getting older. <laughs> it used to be very boring for me, and I just get off key. I just feel I'm not in church, you know, when it's all that quiet, because I'm used to the noisy. I don't know if you understand. What oh, I'm I know. Saying. And, and so. Aaron loved the noise when he was when he was having you know when Joshua yeah. hears him when they're on Mount Sinai and they and he goes, "What's that? What's that sound of war in the camp?" And Moses says, "That's not war. That's them committing idolatry." You know. So, um, <laughs> oh, this was a pro Nigerian section. <laughs> oh, sorry, <laughs> that didn't sound very pro. <laughs> In fact, there are churches in Nigeria that they will dance and do all manner of dances and sweat and do all of that. And then when it is time for the word, everybody's sleeping because they're tired. <laughs> dancing too much, you know. Right. And we have seen the dance as an act of worship, which is also a very wrong aspect. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like the more you dance, you have worshipped more better. And that is coming from our traditional cultural religion mm. where, you know, we dance in shrines, we danced our forefathers. Actually, I've never been to shrine to dance, but our forefathers, you know, you dance and dance very well to impress the God you are serving. So we brought it right into the church and also make it look as you dance then you are victorious then you become more victorious in your christian life they are it doesn't match that way i've been to nigeria <laughs> they, they are two separable things because i am part of it i know right you finish all your dancing and then you go back and live in scene because it doesn't give you victory anywhere it doesn't right. give you it doesn't even help with the the sorrows or the challenges it gives you a euphoria within the church premises that all is fine and then you go back and then you are back to where you are because you've missed the word of God that is supposed to really actually. help you because you are caught up in the, in the euphoria of the dancing. And the but exhaustion of the dancing, right? Exactly. Yeah. But I, I still feel there's a place where you, you, you in gratitude, express your 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 appreciation to God as you sing, you move your body not sensually, not also confusedly or too noisy, because you know when you were talking about raising the sound, and truly I discover it is a reality because the more the noise you raise the tempo, the more the body begins to you know accent to it. But there's the way it will be done with moderation and then the wording of the song gives you that that kind of encouragement to and i would say that i've seen dancing in nigeria that i would say yes i mean almost all dancing that i've seen in churches in america are very sensual hmm. you know even yeah you know, they do inter yeah you know, they were doing interpretive dance and stuff like that at churches that i've been to and it's intended you know it's always the young women that do it it's hmm. intended to have a sensual aspect to it yeah, you know, the Nigerian dancing that I've seen, mm -hmm. it is very much less sensual than yeah. I mean, even when they have a group dance. Exactly. I, you know, exactly. it's 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 very interesting because you know, even coming from a European background, an American background, that cultural background, mm -hmm. there isn't much cultural background that says that dancing isn't supposed to be fairly sensual. Mm. As opposed to, it's interesting that in Africa, it's much less sensual. Hmm. At least the dancing in churches. I'm yeah, sure that they have the same dancing yeah. outside of churches yeah. that that we yeah. do in America. But it's interesting that they have that element. And you know, in in America, it seems like you either get the the Jewish traditions to get that non-central dancing. And so it was very interesting to me to go to Africa and see that non-central dancing in Africa because it is there. That's correct. Hmm. So we thank you for, for listening. It is very easy in a culture to be blind to the to the blessings that you have in the culture and the cursing you have in the culture. And there are blessings that we have when we look at the world around us in so many ways. But we should watch. We should be careful because the things that we're adopting that doesn't seem like they're going to undermine the blessings, if we pursue them to their end, they will 
destroy everything that that has been so comfortable about America. And as a church, we shouldn't be concerned about that. That might be what's needed for people to actually turn to God. They need to. They might need to to feel the suffering. But it would be very naive of us to have been blessed by the gospel for so many years and so many decades and then turn around and think losing the gospel will not cause the losing of the blessing. That is just sheer foolishness. Thank you for joining us. This has been The Conquering Truth, a project of Reformation Baptist Church. If you found this helpful, you can visit us online at theconqueringtruth.com and subscribe here or in your favorite podcast app. Thanks for watching.